Good morning, you guys. It is a beautiful Tuesday. <laughs> I'm just joking. It is a rainy Tuesday, but that's okay because, like I like to say, I'm breathing, so I should be happy, right? I just wanted to remind you guys that Thursday, January 15th at 8 p.m. Central, I will be doing a YouTube Hangout. I'm going to tweet out the link when it's time. How do you normally watch your videos? Do you normally watch your videos through a phone or a mobile device? Or do you watch it on a desktop or a laptop? Um, let me know in the comments below. If you watch it on a desktop or a laptop, I mean even a mobile device, you can take screenshots now. Um, Take a screenshot of your favorite part of the video and tweet it to me at ericTV365. So if you see something that you think is funny, screenshot it, write me something about it, and tweet it over. That'd be, uh, be pretty cool to get to see which, actually see visually the part of the vlog that you like the best. I've noticed that a lot of other YouTubers like The Dive Knowles, Daily Bombs, even Shay, that some of their audience members, whenever they watch it, they take screenshots and like, of different spots in the video that they think is funny like somebody's face is stuck like this something like that and, and they screenshot and send it over i'd like to see what you think is funny send it my way at eric tv 365. hey guys it is currently two o'clock in the afternoon and i have gotten very little done today including vlogging obviously since this is my first clip of the day but it has been so gloomy lately in Houston, and it makes it so hard to get motivated to want to do anything. Look at the skies. We haven't seen the sun in a few days, if not longer. It's probably been over a week since we've seen the sun, and it makes me sad. <laughs> I don't know that I can live in Seattle. Is that true what they say in Seattle? That you know, it's always gloomy and rainy. I don't know, I've never been before. So if any of you guys live in Seattle, tell me down in the comments below if that is true. So instead of being super productive today, I've been sitting at the computer most of the day looking at things to do and places to stay in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Because my aunt and uncle are gonna go there in a few months for their spring break, which is different than ours. Um, but they want us to meet them there. So I'm not sure if we're going to go because it's like a 14 to 15 hour drive for us, which is a long drive, which I know we just did that to California and back, which was a lot longer than that, but we were gone for two weeks. So this time we'd only be gone for like five days. So I'm not sure that I want to drive that distance, but Gatlinburg looks beautiful. We've never been, I don't even think I've been to Tennessee before. So if you guys have ever been to Gatlinburg, let us know how you liked it and some things to do. And maybe that will help us make our decision on whether we go or not. Are you guys loving these gas prices as much as we do? I always thought that only old people talked about gas prices, but here I am talking about it. And I <laughs> always do because when you start driving your own car and paying for your own gas, you talk about gas prices, right? But I am currently filling up my van for $1.89 a gallon. I can't remember how long it's been since I paid for that cheap of gas. I remember when I first started driving, it was less than a dollar per gallon. So that makes me feel kind of old. But I remember the highest it's gotten was almost $4 at one point. So I will gladly take $1.89. I'm not sure how much it's gonna cost to fill it up. It's still running out here. But Eric took $28 to fill his car up. Oh, it just stopped. It took $35. $35 to fill up my van. That is crazy. What you got, what you got, what you got? We just had a UPS drop something off. Yeah. <gasps> oh, he's coming. Don't let him see. I don't. No, you, no, you didn't see it. <laughs> no. Yes. No, you can't see what it is. It's just a box, dude. See? In plastic. Look, look in the box. Look in the box, dude. <laughs> Mine. Nice. After diamond sword. Cool, let me see, dude. Come show us. Now you got two. Nice. Looky, looky, guys. I am cooking some dinner. Yeah, y'all. Once again, you're such a great cook. I Honey, am. I am. You. I am good. So what, what do we do next? <laughs> what are you making? That's the question. I'm making some some chicken in the skillet. To do what with? To eat. <laughs> so right? that's all you're gonna have. Is and, and some boiled water. <laughs> yeah. Like a great dinner. <laughs> I don't know what I'm cooking because I'm not cooking. Amy's <laughs> cooking. But we just got that awesome diamond sword in. Exciting. Yay, you know I mean? You can sword fight because we have the other one too, honey. Wait till the boys I'll sword fight her later. 
You don't get a sword though. Honey. <laughs> what? Never mind. On another note, uh, we're having a, a little bit of a edumacation issues, guys. This is one of those moments where I'm having to be a dad. You know, I'm having to, to step up to the plate and teach my son the right way to do things because we just had the, remember the report card over the weekend? So exciting. A's and B's. That's great, right? Yeah, I actually have a visual for that. Hold on. Let me go get it. Oh, you do? Awesome. But Jacob brought home his Tuesday folder, right? And there's a math grade in there, which is the subject he struggles in, but he got an 86, right, honey? He got an 86 on math, which was just, it was so great. It made me feel really good. And I came home today, and Amy said he had two grades, two things in his Tuesday folder that I wasn't going to be happy with. And one of them was math. And the other one was the easiest grade he'll ever get in his entire life going to school. I'll talk about that in just a second. Let's see the good news first. There we go, right here, guys. 82, 86, 80, 90, baby. In all ease, of course, because he's always good in conduct. Yes. So proud of him for that, right? Yes, very. But on the other note, we're very frustrated because he brought home a very bad grade. It is not a passing grade, it is well below that. I will not say what it is, but it's a grade that made me worried about the effort he's putting into his, uh, into his math right now. And then the other item was a whole page. There was 21 questions on this page, right? He went through and did them all. But the very first thing, this, the test, mind you, is a following directions test. The very first thing said read, the directions were read this entire page first and then answer the questions. He went through, answer number one, answer number two, three, blah, 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 all the way down to 21. The 21st question said, only do the first question, which was put your name on the page in the upper left corner. That was all he had to do, and he failed the test because he did every single question on it. He says, however, that only two children passed that test. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what he said. And back to the math grade. I had to have a long chat with him about he's no longer going to be able to play during the week until he shows that he's going to put forth the effort to do his work right because there's, there's really no other thing that I can, I can do besides teach him the importance of making good grades over playing outside with his friends. Yes, I want him to play, I want him to have a good time with his friends, but education comes first at this, at this age. You know, he has to get that instilled in his head that grades are very important. It's just like with baseball, totally. He doesn't always put forth his best effort. When he does, he's amazing. But when he doesn't, you can tell he doesn't really care about playing at that time. The same thing with school. When he does, He's amazing. You see, he, he brings his grades up. He shows us that he can do good in math. And then he brought home this really bad grade. <sighs> Sometimes it's tough being a dad, but you gotta be a good parent. That's the first thing, guys. If you have children, make sure that you're the best parent that you can be to help your children in the future. Not just right now, in, in the now, playing with them and having fun. It's not all about that. You also have to think about their future and making them become responsible adults at some point, you know? It's tough sometimes.